Hi, and welcome to Breastfeeding Without Birthing. My name is Alyssa Schnell, and I'm an international board-certified lactation consultant and an adoptive mother. I am so excited you're here so I can share with you a little bit about nurturing and nourishing at the breast for mothers who haven't birthed their baby. So who are these breastfeeding without birthing mothers? They may be adoptive mothers, intended mothers, these are mothers through surrogacy, in some cases foster mothers. They may be non-gestational lesbian mothers who oftentimes are adoptive mothers but with the additional nuance that the, the gestational mother may also be nursing in a shared or co-nursing uh, situation. Or it may be a mother who has birthed her baby, but she's not currently breastfeeding. She may be relactating. That means that she stopped making milk for her baby, but would like to reintroduce milk production. Or she could be an exclusively pumping mother. She has been making milk for her baby all along that she has been pumping and giving to her baby in a bottle, and she would like to bring the baby to breastfeeding. This is how the journey began for me. This is my family in 2006. I have two children by birth and my youngest by adoption, all three breastfed. Breastfeeding my adopted daughter was one of the most special things I've ever done and really what prompted me to become a lactation consultant. So what do I mean by breastfeeding without birthing? I mean, does it look just like any other breastfeeding situation? Well, in some cases it does. The mother brings in a full milk supply, she exclusively feeds her baby at the breast, and it looks very much like it would if the mother had given birth to her baby. However, in most cases, mothers who are breastfeeding without birthing do not produce all the milk that their babies will need. Most will produce some, but only a few will produce all. So it's got to look at it in some different ways. One way it often looks is the mother is still exclusively feeding at the breast, but she's using a device called an at-breast supplementer. This is a picture of the lactate. It's one brand. The other commonly used brand is the SNS, which stands for Supplemental Nursing System. And as you can see, the lactate is a bag that hangs around mother's neck. It's filled with supplemental milk or formula. And that milk or formula is delivered to the baby, to the nip, mother's nipple, via a tiny feeding tube, which you probably can't see, that goes all the way to the nipple. So as the baby suckles at the breast, the baby is getting whatever milk the mother directly from the mother's breast that she's producing, and whatever she's not able to produce, the baby is getting the supplement through this tiny feeding tube. We sometimes call this the external milk duct. You can, I like this picture because it shows really nicely the lactate, but you can also tell that if that mother had tucked the lactate bag inside her camisole, she probably could have nursed pretty discreetly, and most people might not have been able to tell she was using one. Another uh, approach mothers can take is they can feed at the breast. The baby gets what other, whatever milk she's able to make, and whatever the baby needs extra, the mother will give via a bottle. Or, this looks very simple, similar, if the mother isn't making any milk, this sometimes happens, uh, not all breastfeeding without birthing mothers do produce milk, so she is giving all the nutrition to the baby using a bottle, but still putting the baby to the non-producing breast for comfort, nurturing, connection. And there are some mothers who are producing some milk, and they give that milk to the baby in a bottle. So as you can see, breastfeeding without birthing is going to look different for different mothers. I mentioned supplementing in the last slide. We can deliver the supplement through an at-breast supplementer, like the lactate or the SNS, or we can deliver it through a bottle. What to supplement with? Well, a mother can supplement with her own express breast milk. This is really the ideal situation if a mother can use her own milk to provide extra food for the baby. So some mothers who are breastfeeding without birthing will start pumping before their baby arrives to start bringing in some milk before their baby's in arms. The reason they do this is unlike when a mother gives birth, she, her milk comes in very quickly and strongly. When a mother is, hasn't given birth, she can still bring in milk, but it's a slow, gradual process. So oftentimes 
mothers will take some lead time before the baby arrives to start building up some milk production. They can use this milk that they produce before baby arrives, put it in the freezer, and use it to supplement with later. It's a really beautiful situation. Sometimes also mothers will be breastfeeding and then do some extra pumping and use that to supplement. So there's a couple ways a mother can supplement with her own expressed breast milk. She may choose to supplement with another mother's milk. So this is becoming um, more well known recently. It's called uh, milk sharing, where one mother who has extra milk is going to donate her milk to uh, a mother who is not making enough milk. This is not the same as milk selling, which can have some pretty significant risks. Milk sharing also has risks involved, but there are precautions that we can take that can make it uh, actually a very safe alternative. Infant formula is another option. So these are some choices a mother has when she is, is supplementing. Latching baby at the breast. If a mother is bringing home a healthy newborn baby, then latching her baby at the breast is not going to be very different than as if she had given birth. Healthy newborn babies are hardwired to breastfeed. Mother can, one way, a great way to get started is for the mother to lean back with her newborn skin to skin on her bare chest with the baby's cheek resting on mother's bare breast. And then it becomes a dance where the baby will will bop his head around and mother will guide him and together they will work together to uh, get that to help that baby to latch. If a mother is is bringing home an older baby, so this would generally be through adoption or foster care, that baby is most likely going to be bottle fed and so how do we get this bottle feeding baby to breastfeeding? Well, it's a bit of a transition, and one thing we can do to help this transition is to bridge the gap between bottle feeding and breastfeeding. So we can use tech, bottle feeding techniques that make bottle feeding more like breastfeeding. We can also do things that can make breastfeeding more like bottle feeding, bridging that gap, making it easier for the baby to go from the bottle to the breast. Now let's talk about making milk for your baby. I think this is probably what most people think about first when they think, well, how can you breastfeed a baby you didn't give birth to because there's not all those hormones that happen in the pregnancy and happen during the birth. Making milk without pregnancy and birth is often called inducing lactation. In order to induce lactation, there are physical techniques. These are necessary for a mother to bring in milk without pregnancy and birth. There is also medications that can be very helpful. They are optional. Mothers who take medications in addition to the physical techniques will often make more milk and make it more quickly. But again, it's totally optional. So let's talk about the physical techniques. Breastfeeding is at the top of the list. Breastfeeding is probably the most effective way to bring in milk, especially when it's used with an at breast supplementer. Because when there is an ample flow of milk, the baby's going to suckle in a way that stimulates even more milk production. It's very different than the way that a baby would suckle at a breast if there wasn't much milk. So it's important to have the flow of milk in addition to that suckling at the breast. Pumping is another excellent physical technique for inducing lactation. Particularly helpful if a mother is working to bring in milk before her baby has arrived, since breastfeeding is not an option, she can be pumping. Hand expression is another way to extract milk from the breast. It's a total manual technique as opposed to pumping is using a machine. Some mothers actually do better with hand expression than with an electric breast pump. Although most mothers find using a pump is a more efficient uh, technique. Breast massage is a great way to wake up the breasts and get them ready for making milk. Also, breast massage or hand expression or both work very well together with pumping. That research has shown that when mothers use hand expression or breast massage together with pumping, they get more milk from pumping. And there are a variety of other manual techniques as well. Let's move on to medications. There are some pharmaceutical medications that can be extremely helpful for many mothers. Domperidone is very popular among mothers who are inducing lactation. It can dramatically increase the amount of milk that a mother makes. It is considered the safest 
uh, prescription medication for uh, mothers who are trying to increase milk. It's very rare for mothers to have adverse side effects with Zomperidone and never has an adverse side effect been reported in a breastfeeding baby whose mother's taking Zomperidone. But here's the catch. Here in the United States, Zomperidone is still in the process of getting FDA approved. It is a medication that has been around a long time. It's widely used in other countries, over-the-counter in many of them. But here in the U.S., we're still working on getting it FDA approved. We're waiting on pins and needles. It should be just a few more years. In the meantime, mothers are getting down Peridot in the United States via compounding pharmacies or via uh, international online pharmacies. The birth control pill is another medication that mothers will take to help with inducing lactation. It doesn't actually work to increase milk production. In fact, you wouldn't take it at the same time that a mother is trying to produce milk, but she may take it ahead of time because what it will do when the birth control pill is taken, a certain type of pill in a certain type of way can cause hormonal changes that are similar to the hormonal changes that happen during pregnancy. During pregnancy, a mother is not making milk, but her breasts are getting larger, fuller, tender. They're getting ready to start making milk. And this is what the birth control pill can be used for, to start preparing the breast for making milk ahead of time. Mothers will often also use herbs. Uh, goat's rue is a very popular herb for mothers inducing lactation. It works in a, in a similar fashion as the birth control pill in that it can cause the breast changes that help the breast get ready to start making milk. Fenugreek, blessed thistle, shatavari, and others are also um, reputed to help increase milk production. Of course, with any of these, the herbs as well as the pharmaceutical medications should be used with caution as they may have some side effects that are negative as well as the positive side effect of increasing milk. And they are contraindicated for certain mothers in certain situations. So I've given you a lot of ideas here of ways to induce lactation, but how do we put those all together to make a plan to bring in milk? That's what I'm going to talk about next. A protocol for inducing lactation. So it's a step-by-step -step approach, taking those techniques on the previous page, putting them together to help a mother bring in milk. So several protocols for inducing lactation have been developed, and so a mother can choose one of these established protocols. One of the most popular ones is the Newman Goldfar protocol. It's very popular because it's really effective, but it's not a good fit for every mother. So it's nice to know that there are other protocols a mother can choose from, or she can take a look at the various protocols that are out there and kind of pick and choose between different ones with professional support because we don't want to randomly pick and choose, but we can pick and choose in a smart way to make a pro an individualized protocol for a mother that's going to just fit her needs, values, circumstances to a T. So the protocols can be very simple or rather intricate. They may involve some preparation before a baby arrives or not. They may involve medications or they may not. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of introducing you to Breastfeeding Without Birthing. Uh, I've written a book called Breastfeeding Without Birthing, A Breastfeeding Guide for Mothers Through Adoption, Surrogacy, and Other Special Circumstances. It's got all the information I've just shared with you, but all the detail is filled in. So you have all the information you will need to, uh, to be a Breastfeeding Without Birthing mother or to help support one. My book can be purchased through my website, breastfeedingwithoutbirthing.com, or also on Amazon. The breastfeedingwithoutbirthing.com website also has a lot of excellent information to help support you in your journey. It's got a blog, it's got a bunch of links, and also has information on finding an international board-certified lactation consultant. And I highly recommend connecting with an, an IBCLC, that's the short version, of International Board Certified Lactation Consultant to help you through this journey because it, having professional support can really make a big difference. Not every IBCLC has experience with working with mothers like you, um, but ask them what their experience is and, and how much they're willing to learn and grow along with you. I am also available for individual consultations in person. I live in the St. Louis, Missouri area by phone or by Skype.
at alyssa at sweetpeabreastfeeding.com, 314-614-2074. Again, thank you so much for listening here today, and I hope this has given you a great introduction, and I wish you all the best in your journey.